canals. Not small tourist canals in cities like Venice, but the huge ones that help move almost everything in the world. There are two really famous canals, the Panama Canal in Central America and the Suez Canal in Egypt. There's also talk about a possible new one, the Nicaragua Canal, but it hasn't been built yet. So why do these canals matter? Because they save a huge amount of time and money. Let's take an example. Imagine a ship full of goods trying to go from New York to San Francisco. If there were no Panama Canal, that ship would have to sail all the way around the bottom of South America. That's 13,000 kilometers of extra travel. The Suez Canal does something similar. It connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea, letting ships go straight between Europe and Asia. Without it, they'd have to sail around the entire African continent. Another very long and expensive trip. So yes, these canals save time and money. But here's the bigger point. They've become critical to the entire world economy. To understand how powerful a canal really is, let's take a look to year 1956 and the Suez Canal crisis. Back then, the Suez Canal was mostly controlled by British and French companies, even though it was located in Egypt. But Egypt's president at the time, Gamal Abdel Nasser, didn't like that. He believed that if the canal was in Egyptian territory, it should belong to Egypt, not to foreign powers. So in July 1956, Nasser made a bold move. He nationalized the canal. That means Egypt took full control and kicked out the British and French. Britain and France were extremely angry. They didn't want to lose control of the canal, so they made a secret deal with Israel. Together, they planned a surprise attack on Egypt to take the canal back. But things didn't go as planned. The United States and the Soviet Union, even though they were enemies during the Cold War, both told Britain, France, and Israel to stop the invasion. They were worried that the fighting could turn into a much bigger war in the Middle East. So in the end, Egypt kept the Suez Canal now, one country is trying to get more involved in these important routes, China. Since they are the biggest exporter in the world, it depends a lot on safe and fast shipping routes for their goods. That's why China doesn't just want to use the canals, but influence or even control them. Back in 1999, the United States gave control of the canal to Panama. Since then, the US no longer runs it, but it still cares about what happens there. In recent years, Chinese companies have started to invest heavily in Panama. They've built ports, helped run shipping terminals, and signed deals with the Panamanian government. This kind of makes the United States nervous. Because if a crisis ever happened, China might use its influence in Panama to slow down or block US ships. Even if that never happens, just having that kind of power near the canal gives China a stronger position in global politics. On top of that, there are talks about building a new one. This time, through Nicaragua, a country just north of Panama. It would be another path between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, but a huge idea like that will need tens of billions of dollars and years to build. Even if that doesn't go through, we still have these two, which are important strategic checkpoints. If, for example, a war broke out in Middle East, which already is a thing, and the Suez Canal was closed, things could go really wrong. Oil tankers can't pass through. Europe, which depends heavily on Middle Eastern oil and gas, gets into major problems. Prices for energy and goods rise overnight, and countries would begin to panic. If, on the other hand, Panama Canal would get closed, the US and China would suffer heavily. So now you know that these tiny waterways are kind of important, more than we think. If a giant rock fell on both and blocked them, yes, world economics is fucked.